Hi, everyone. This is E. David Crawford, Editor-in-Chief of Grand Rounds in Urology. When I arrived at the University of Colorado in the mid-80s, the institution was already working hard on ultrasound, actually dating back to 1948. A faculty member, Dr. Doug Douglas Howery, worked on ultrasound investigations at the University Hospital in the VA and uh, with some sort of embryonic B-mode equipment. Fast forward, we've seen a lot happen since the early 90s with ultrasound. It, it plays a major role in evaluating and biopsying the prostate and other things that we use it for, scrotum, kidneys, uh, bladder, routine bladder post wave residuals are done with ultrasound in the clinic. Well, probably one of the most significant changes and, and new pieces of equipment that I've seen in the past couple of decades has been the micro ultrasound, the 29 hertz megahertz machine. This really is a game changer uh, and is one that is playing an important role in our armamentarium. Joining me is a good friend, colleague, Dr. Jerry Andriel from the University of Washington in St. Louis, who's one of the co-authors and investigators in a new study that is being done to examine micro ultrasound and how it compares with MRI and fusion with some of the fusion modalities. Jerry is uh, going to be leaving the University of Washington in St. Louis and going to Johns Hopkins as professor in Washington, D.C. after the first of the year. Jerry, thanks for joining us and appreciate uh, your sharing what's happening with this piece of equipment and this clinical trial. Yeah, well, David, thanks uh, very much for the kind introduction. And I think you're right. Uh, this, this is a quantum jump in the improvement of ultrasound to help us uh, diagnose uh, prostate cancer better. So uh, many urologists will ask, well, gee, what is microultrasound? And as you said, it, it's a new system that operates at 29 megahertz. And to put that in perspective, the conventional ultrasounds that we've all been using since the mid eighties operate at six to nine megahertz. And this, this much higher uh, megahertz of imaging results in a 300% improvement in resolution. And that allows you to see structures within the prostate down to 70 microns in diameter. And by the way, as you know, it's not uncommon if you're doing a micro ultrasound to see the biopsy tracks from a biopsy that may have been done a year or two uh, in, in the past. Uh, but over the last two to three years uh, playing around with this uh, new modality, uh, we've developed what's referred to as the PRIMUS, the P-R-I-M-U-S classification. And it's very analogous to the PIRAD classification for uh, MRI abnormalities uh, within the prostate. Uh, because micro ultrasound is, is certainly able to identify cancers uh, at least as well as I'll show you in the next slide as uh, MRI does. And the good thing about this is that this is ultrasound. It's under the control of the urologist. All of the skills urologists already have in doing transrectal ultrasonography and either transrectal or transperineal biopsies are very easily translated to this device. And, and this device uh, can be done uh, as ultrasound alone or it can be done as a combination of uh, ultrasound and uh, MRI fusion. Now, I referred to uh, this uh, before that uh, a number of studies have been done. They're basically single institution trials that have compared the sensitivity of microultrasound for the detection of clinically significant prostate cancer to MRI. And as you can see in these uh, four or five studies that are shown here, microultrasound is at least as good, possibly slightly more sensitive than MRI is to detect prostate cancer. And it's because uh, this data is very strong, but it's not level one data, that a group of us uh, got together and devised a trial that we refer to as the optimum clinical trial. 
And it's um, a very uh, simple trial that I think uh, urologists will easily uh, understand. It's a three arm international randomized trial to determine uh, whether uh, micro ultrasound is as sensitive or more sensitive than MRI in detecting clinically significant prostate cancer. And you can see in the consort diagram uh, over here that uh, it's a three arm randomization. Some patients will have only a micro ultrasound. Some will have a micro ultrasound plus MRI fusion. Others will have conventional ultrasound with uh, MRI fusion as necessary. And overall, we're planning to enroll 1,200 biopsy naive men uh, who have uh, an elevated PSA or other risk factors for prostate cancer. And you can see that we'll have uh, three comparison groups micro ultrasound alone, MRI plus micro ultrasound, or MRI plus conventional ultrasound. And we will determine uh, the sensitivity to detect clinically significant prostate cancer. We're looking at other outcomes, including uh, cost and patient reported uh, outcomes. I'm proud to say that uh, the first subjects uh, have been enrolled within the last week, and we anticipate enrolling these uh, uh, patients over the next six months or so, and that uh, we would have uh, uh, solid results by the end of 2022 uh, and able to report that in early uh, 2023. So I think this really uh, holds uh, the prospect of allowing urologists now to regain control of uh, imaging and targeted biopsy for prostate cancer. And the next step, of course, would be targeted treatment of prostate cancer. Thank you, Jerry. Um, as, uh, as you pointed out, the uh, level one evidence requires most of the time a, a randomized clinical trial. And I applaud you, the rest of the investigators and uh, ExactView for getting this important trial off the ground. One question you, uh, in ARM3, you said uh, MRI and ultra, standard ultrasound. Is that cognitive fusion or is it, uh, are, are you using one of the fusion platforms? Do you know? It, it's uh, individualized to the center. Some centers uh, may use Euronav, some may use Artemis, some may be doing cognitive because as you know, cognitive can be uh, equivalent to uh, a fusion biopsy. So it's up to uh, the individual center, which form of MRI targeted biopsy would be done in the conventional group. And, and so this is, a, there's, this is a group of patients that are, are going for biopsy uh, and uh, where, where you feel one's indicated. I would, uh, I would think that this would accrue a lot quicker than, uh, than uh, it is, uh, you stayed on that slide, spring of 2023. But I, I would think it would, this, uh, there's a lot of excitement here. It would accrue very quickly. Um, anyway, I think an, another question that I hear often, we've had a micro ultrasound now for about three years. Uh, and a urologist asked me, uh, how does this compare with some of the other machines out there cost-wise? Are you able to answer that? Yeah, it, it's uh, very, very comparable. It's in the same ballpark of cost if you were to get uh, the latest iteration of a uh, Brulin Care or some other um, you know, conventional uh, ultrasound system. Yeah, and one of the other, other concerns was the size of the prostate, size of the prostate, large prostates and be able to image the transition zone. But um, as you and I know, there's new software now that have, has really uh, solved that. And the other thing is, is that if you have this and use it for fusion, you've got, you've got two, two in one here with, uh, with the ultrasound and the fusion technique where you don't really need an Artemis or Euronev or anything like that, correct? No, no I, I agree. The, to me, there's no question that uh, many cancers will be imageable by either micro ultrasound or MRI, but there are definitely some cancers that are imageable only by one of those modalities. So the ability to do all three type 
of uh, image of uh, biopsy, meaning a systematic, a micro ultrasound targeted, and an MRI targeted at the same time, and to do it by whatever route you want, transrectal or transperineal. I think this is this is uh, fantastic. It's one stop shopping in the hands of a urologist, uh, and uh, you know I think that that's that's very very important. Some of the other things that that you know about that we've gone we've done other things with the micro ultrasound including using it for cryotherapy really get nice visualization of the prostatic capsule and the and the rectum in europe they're actually uh, you stick the probe in a little bit further you can actually see the bladder and and stage bladder cancer so there's a lot of it a lot of neat things happening yeah they, i believe you're right i mean there there will be other applications for this um uh high uh, or micro ultrasound or high frequency ultrasound because the imaging is so so much better than what we're familiar with yeah so jerry thanks for uh, sharing this and i uh, hope that urologists will support this trial uh again that's the way we get the answer randomized uh the clinical trials yeah, you've got to do it no matter how good the data look you need to do we need to do a randomized trial to prove it yeah and Good luck on your uh, move uh, to uh, DC and I'm sure that it's a, a big loss for uh, University of Washington in St. Louis, but it's a strong place and uh, you've built a great program and it will continue. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, Dave. Thanks for the kind words. 